Good Thursday and on the family and friends. So good to have you for this devotion today. Right now we are working through a book called Acts, uh, Catching Up with the Spirit. It's our sermon series for the next several weeks. And through that series, we're going to read through the whole book of Acts. So I hope you'll join us. Today I'm looking at Acts chapter 3, 11 through 26. Now, Peter has just healed a man who has been crippled. It says that he was crippled all his life. Now, uh, it, was, it was not uncommon at that time for people who were crippled. Uh, they couldn't be a part of normal society. They couldn't work. They couldn't earn wages. Their job was to be a beggar. That's how they, that's how they made money. So they were professional beggars. And uh, for someone with this, this person's affliction, that's what you would expect them to be doing. And so Peter comes in, he heals this man. And of course, everybody who was there at the Solomon's portico, there around the temple, would be familiar with this person. They've probably seen him day after day. And so they are amazed at the healing of this man. And they want to look at Peter and the apostles as the ones that healed it. But Peter immediately says, it had nothing to do with us. It had all to do with Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to say, which you help persecute. Now, talk about a way is to get people in, on your side. I'm not sure I would have started off that way, but that's what Peter was saying. He said, uh, Verse 14, you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you instead. So he's, he's saying the one that you wanted to have killed was the one who has the power to, to heal this man. And his name alone has made this man strong. It has healed him. God has strengthened this man whom you see and know. The faith that comes through Jesus gave him complete health right before your eyes. But then Peter goes back to say, Brothers and sisters, I know you acted in ignorance, so did your rulers. But this is how God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Change your hearts and lives. Turn back to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then the Lord will provide a season of relief from the distresses of this age, and he will send Jesus, whom he handpicked to be your Christ. And he goes on to say, Jesus must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things, about which God spoke long ago, through his holy prophets. See, Peter is taking them back to the scriptures that they would be familiar with. And he's telling them that the prophets begin to tell us what this full restoration would be like. Many times I've heard people say, well, Jesus came to upset the apple cart or to turn the world upside down. Not, not really what Jesus came to do. He came to set things right side up, to restore it, to make it whole again. And he says we can get a glimpse of that restoration from what the prophets have written. Now, it might have been really nice if Peter had said more about what this restoration was going to look like. But I kind of liken it to um, when you go somewhere and you see a beautiful panoramic view and you take a picture of it, or you take several pictures during a trip, and then you go back and show friends, and they go, oh, this picture just doesn't do it justice. Because it just is so much better than what the picture looks like. Imagine the visions of some of the prophets, visions of justice extended to everybody. Peace, health, abundance established by God. Those are the kinds of things that you can use your own imagination. What 
is this restoration going to look like? And it's going to look so much even wonderful than we can imagine. Peter also mentions the offspring of Abraham and providing a blessing to all of the world's families through Abraham. Again, he's getting back to that idea that God is going to bless the whole world, not just the Jewish people, but the whole world through this, Jesus Christ. And so it's a universal message for all of us. This story of healing is, is one of the very first ones in Acts. And I hope you will stay with us to, to learn more about the early church, the book of Acts, how some things may seem very strange to us. Don't look at what, what does this say about me, but what does this story tell us about God? I hope you'll join some of the other uh, devotions this week and join us on Sunday for our second sermon on Acts. Catching up with the Spirit. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.